Welcome back, folks. Season two of Major Media Podcast is here, and I'm excited for you all to listen. Just a few things for you to keep in mind as you join me on this season's ride. First, Tristan is officially in his second semester of his freshman year. So the year is 2007, not 2006. And secondly, if you like what you hear, I need your help. While I love creating content you enjoy, as I continue to improve upon my craft and develop new and exciting projects, I'd appreciate your continued support in the form of likes, shares, reviews, subscriptions, and donations. So make sure you help out. All right, enough small talk. Enjoy the episode. Unfortunately, ma'am, I can't tell you that because David is legally an adult. I understand you're his mom, but because he's over 18, our policy prevents me from talking to you about the status of David's admissions application. But if David calls, I'd be glad to help him. Ma'am, again, please have David call. Well, you too. Ass. Rough call? Oh, hey, Chance. Yeah, you could say that. I've had a few of those today myself, but she'll get used to it. Well, that's kind of depressing. Who wants to get used to being aggravated? So outside of that call, how's your second day of work here? It's cool. I appreciate you helping me out while I get used to everything. No problem. Only three of us working here, so I've got to look out for you. (laughs) True. I really do appreciate Chance. I've been asking a shit ton of questions, and he hasn't gotten annoyed once. On a side note, I wonder why he hasn't gotten his hair cut. You know, I've been meaning to ask you, where were you hiding out last semester? I don't remember seeing you. Again with this question. Ben asked me the same thing. Ugh, now I'm thinking about that damn kiss. Why did Ben have to do it? And why am I harboring this secret? I was just trying to lay low and feel everything out, I guess. I can understand that. You picked an interesting time to come out of hiding. What do you mean? Well, I know what the blab report stuff. Some people are shook to live their lives out here. The what? You haven't heard of the blab report? It's basically the Black National Enquirer at Hamilton. Some mystery person here at school with too much time on their hands putting everyone's business on Front Street. Well, at least on Facebook anyway. You know what? Never mind. I think my friend Denise was telling me about that. I just didn't remember the name of the site. That whole burn book situation is not really my thing. Really, Tristan? A Mean Girl reference? Maybe you won't catch it. <laughs> so no Regina George for you? Okay, I'm busted. <laughs> exactly. But if I were to take a look at the Blab Report account, what kind of things would I find? Haven't been allowed on Facebook for a few weeks now, but when I was, they were usually talking about who was out here creeping and really what's going on with the Black Greeks. Doesn't sound like I'm missing much. And allowed? Did I say allowed? I, you know what? Isn't it time for you to be getting off? Oh, oh yeah, it is. I guess I'm about to head out then. Okay, cool. I'll see you later. See ya. Hmm. I wonder if I have time to stop at Taco Bell before I meet up with Denise. But do I want to do that if I'm going to stay over at Kendrick's later tonight? Shit. Do I even want to spend the night at Kendrick's? Being around him while I hold this secret makes me feel so damn guilty. (sighs) Maybe I should just tell him what happened tonight. Friend, thanks for the nachos. You're welcome. I'm just glad the Burrito Supreme hit the way I needed it to. Let's just hope I don't regret eating it later. So, you ready to study or what? Sure am. Well, let me check Facebook first. If I get all the distractions out now, then I won't be distracted when we study. Um, I'm pretty sure that's not how that works. Uh, I'm sorry. Did you become a psych major overnight? Excuse me? (laughs) Just give me like three minutes. You can even time me. Whatever. I'll text Kendrick. Shit! What? What is it? The Blab Report. Oh, that. What about it? Tristan, this new post is saying that Ben, my Ben, was making out with some guy during the Black History Month gala. Shit! This is bad, Tristan. This is really bad. Right? This is big news. Who said it was news? What exactly does the post say? Read it to me. Actually, I can read it. Let me see your laptop. Okay, here. Hamilton's DL Chronicles. Oh, folks, tonight's post is a mic drop kind of post told to me straight from an eyewitness's mouth. Let's get to it.
The night of the Black History Month gala, Campus's golden boy was in the bathroom having a little breakdown when he was consoled by someone other than the beard he runs around with for show. Someone with another hot dog and not a bun if you catch my drift. After this mystery boy talked your favorite Kappa Pi Omega from collapsing into a puddle, this frat guy thanked the good Samaritan with a juicy kiss. If you haven't figured it out by now, the Download Brother in question is Ben Watkins. While this shocking news is certainly cracking the faces of many girls on campus, it doesn't surprise me at all. I've long known of Ben's double life. In fact, rumor has it he loves the fresh meat of freshmen, which his lip lock partner was probably most definitely. Unfortunately, folks, I haven't been able to identify the other man in this story. My source only saw the back of his head through the bathroom stall. But what I do know is the guy was black, medium to muscular build, and had quite the fashionable black belt. Whoever you are, mystery man, I hope you don't think you are Ben's only peach fuzz kiss. Until next time, Hamilton. Shit. Damn, Tristan. I spent the past couple of months crushing on someone to place for your team. Did you know? I'm shook. Like, what the hell? Oh, gosh, I feel so damn bad for Ben. What asshole thinks they have the right to just out him like that? To put him on blast on the damn internet? Hell, he was freaking out trying to convince me he wasn't gay. How's he going to deal with this? As bad as I feel for him, though, I'm glad it wasn't me who was called out. Tristan, did you hear me? Did you know he likes men? Um, I... Wait a minute. You knew, didn't you? You knew he was gay or whatever, and you stayed here for weeks. Let me crush on him like an idiot. It's complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. That's what I get. You got me out here looking like a damn fool, and I get it's complicated. Is this the loyalty I earned as your Denise, friend? Denise, you've become like a sister to me. I am definitely loyal to you. But telling you about someone's sexuality is not my business to broadcast to the world. I'm not the world. I get what you're saying, but look. Being a Black man in America is hard enough. And once people know you're also gay, you have to not only deal with the uphill battle in mainstream America, but you also have to face the dirty looks, the whispers, and the second-class treatment from your own people. And I can't expose someone's truth if they obviously aren't ready for all of that. I mean, I get that. I just wish you would have told me so I wasn't throwing myself at this boy. Hell, you've been pushing me towards To be him. fair, I haven't always known. I just found out he was attracted to men myself. Okay. You not knowing the whole time makes me feel a little better. So when did you find out? <sighs> Damn it. She would ask that. I... Well, here's the thing. I may have found out the night of the gala. What? Did Ben come out and tell you that night? I mean, I assume you're not the witness they talked about. I definitely am not the witness. So he told you? Man, her guessing game is so painful. I'm just going to spit it out. Look, I know because I'm the mystery man. You're what? I know. He just kissed me out of the blue. Honestly, this is a lot of information to deal with. I just can't even focus. You want to call it a night on studying? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, I guess I'm just going to head to my room then. I'm really sorry about how this went down. Damn. I really don't know how Kendrick's going to take all of this news. If you even told him. Shit, Kendrick. Why did I not just listen to my dad and tell him right away? Okay, I'm going to drop my stuff off in my room and go straight to his place. God, please allow things between me and Kendrick to be okay. I have my keys, my phone. I don't know who that is, but I really don't have time for this. One set. Just tell me this ain't you. Oh, no. Come in. I was actually just coming to talk to you. Whatever. Tell me that the Blad Report isn't talking about you. That you aren't the guy with the black belt. Shit, the belt. Can you request me because of the belt? As much as I want to, I can't. But I can explain. Fuck, Tristan, you cheated on me? Babe, it's not like that. I, I was in the bathroom trying to pull myself together after I got the news my dad was going to be speaking. Then I heard Ben walk in. He was upset. I was trying to talk to him and calm him down. Then out of nowhere, he kissed me. So you let him kiss you? I didn't know it was coming. It just happened. I didn't ask for that. I didn't want it. So why didn't you tell me about the kiss? If he kissed you and you did nothing wrong, why'd you wait days to tell me what happened? Hell, we only talked about it because I brought it up. 
I don't know. I was going to tell you that night. Then I decided to wait to tell you until after the gala. Then I was just waiting for the right time. I was looking for the right words to tell you. You say, Kendrick, Ben put his lips on me and I didn't want him to. You know, when you say that, right away. I don't think I've ever seen the vein that runs across Kendrick's forehead be so big. He is pissed. Babe, I'm sorry. Nah, don't. Did you kiss him back? No. I, I don't think I did. You don't think you did? It was a quick thing. I don't remember. I pushed him off and stopped him. I told him I have a boyfriend. You remember all that, but you don't remember if you kissed him back. Please calm down. You know what? I'm not even about to do this. I'm out. Babe. Don't touch me. I just... Kendrick, wait. <sighs> this can't be happening. How did I make such a mess of things? What am I going to do now? I'm such a fucking idiot. Kendrick? Actually, big bro, it's me. Jordan, hey, what are you doing here? Look, bro, I need a favor. I thought you're the best person to help. Can it wait? Today's been a really shitty day. Look, and I'm sorry to hear that, but this can't wait. Come on, come on. Who is he talking to? CJ? You two come in and tell me what's going on. Tristan, he needs help. With what? CJ, it's okay. Show him. Why is he lifting up his shirt? Oh my gosh. What in the hell happened? We were watching a movie at his dad's house, and his dad was gone. When we started doing us, his dad just popped up out of nowhere. Tristan, he started beating him. Hell, he tried to beat me too, but CJ stopped him. Lord, you're laying a lot at my doorstep tonight. In America in 2007, this is still happening for being gay? <sighs> Jeez. Why didn't you guys go to the hospital or to the police? He won't let me take him. CJ, we really should go. I can take you. Nah. See, he won't go. Okay. What now, Tristan? If they aren't going to let me take him to the hospital, I just have to bring someone in to give me a hand. Fine. Jordan, go into my closet and get a towel and the alcohol. Help CJ clean up some of the wounds. I'm going to call for some help. Yo. Relax. I'm not calling 911. Just trust me. Please answer the phone. Hey folks, welcome back. Episode five has a lot going on. Um, <laughs> it was one of my favorite episodes to write, not only for the season, but for the entirety of the show. I'm going to try to cover everything, or at least the most important things. If I miss something, forgive me. Just DM me and I'll try to answer any questions you may have. Now let's start from the top. Tristan starts his new job working for the admissions office. This does parallel my real life experience. The spring of 2007 was my second semester of my freshman year. Um, I too started a job in undergrad working at the admissions office where I got to really know my best friend Thomas who voices the character of Chance. I thought he'd be the perfect person to voice the character of Chance since Chance is loosely based off of Thomas. I greatly appreciate him. He did an amazing job. You know, moving forward, we have the messy Facebook account that posts this well, trashy thing about Ben. Um, just so you all know, I kind of wrote the account to mimic something like a media takeout where you just, someone just posting things, whether they're true or not. Um, it doesn't really matter because you kind of put that narrative out there. And so that's what's really going on with Ben. You know, when Den, excuse me, when Denise reads up about this public outing of Ben, she's kind of taken aback. You know, she's had this crush on this guy who she finds out plays for the other team, or he might be sexually fluid. I haven't really got into that in this particular episode, but she just kind of crushed. Um, and so she now wants to know who this mystery person is. Now, Tristan, he didn't take the advice of his dad, so he hasn't actually told Denise or Kendrick about the kiss, and he should have. But he has been sitting on this information. And even though the Facebook account kind of puts out that Ben did kiss someone, it hasn't named Tristan at all. Um, so Tristan, you know, he could lie and act like he doesn't know what's going on. But at this point, you know, he really just 
thinks it's time to just own it. And so he's owning it with Denise, who's really not feeling it. You know, she's kind of thinking, well, damn, you know, you knew I had a crush on somebody that you knew had a crush on you. To Tristan's point, he didn't know per se um, that Ben had a crush on him. He knows that they had a dynamic, but he's not really owning whether or not they were flirting back and forth. So, I mean, but you all have heard the episode, so you all can kind of draw your own conclusions about whether Tristan knew he was flirting with Ben or not. Um, I'll leave that up for you all to decide. But at the very least, you know, Tristan did have this kiss with Ben and he could have told Denise that um, he kind of tries to explain it away with the fact that he was not wanting to out somebody. Now, that begs the question, because, so here's the thing. I, too, don't think it's my job to out anybody. Um, you know, that's not my business, one. And two, you, that's not my privilege to out or to reveal somebody else's truth. Let them do it. So on one hand, you have that. And two, you know, there's also this thing about loyalty that's brought up in the conversation with Denise and Tristan. Like, does he owe Denise an explanation of Ben's sexuality? That is something that is going to be a sore spot for them. Um, whether they make up or not, or they fall out completely or not, I'll let you listen to kind of figure out so you can kind of see how that happens on your own. I don't want to spoil it. So their relationship is kind of stuck right now. And so is the relationship with Kendrick and Tristan. This is their first major relationship hurdle. Oof. And what a hurdle. Um, Kendrick is not even upset about the kiss. Okay, so he's a little upset about the kiss. Uh, with Tristan and Ben, but he's more upset about the deception of it all. You know, Tristan has been sitting on this secret for uh, a little bit, a few days now. He hasn't said a word. And, you know, and then when Tr Kendrick is confronting Tristan, well, did you kiss him back? Tristan is playing dumb and saying, well, I don't know. Kendrick rightfully gets upset because, honestly, you know if you kiss somebody back. It's not a thing of, well, I can't remember, you know. Tristan wasn't drunk. <laughs> he was very much sober when it happened. So Tristan's really just trying to scramble to save his relationship. He loves Kendrick. He, you know, he still loves Kendrick. Hasn't spoken to Ben um, since the kiss. Not that that really means much to Kendrick. But um, so he's just trying to scramble to save his relationship. And, you know, by the end of the episode, that relationship too, like the one with Denise is just stuck. <laughs> he doesn't know where they go from here. And you know, Tristan, emotionally exhausted from everything that's going on, that's when Jordan shows up with CJ. I know a lot of you all thought CJ was gonna be super DL or perhaps abusive. I decided not to go that route. Um, I actually wanted to present a different side of coming out or outed or having your truth revealed. Let's go with that. Um, so when CJ's dad finds CJ and Jordan kissing or whatever they're doing, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it becomes violent and he starts beating up on CJ and trying to get to Jordan and it becomes a thing. And then unfortunately, there are instances where parents are just that cruel to their children, um, just for the simple fact of their sexuality. And I kind of wanted to highlight that that is a reality um, for some people, which is unfortunate. So CJ is not abusive. He's not super DL. He's scared. He's been hiding who he is because he's scared. And now we know he had good reason to be. Um, Tristan needs help. Um, he wants to call somebody in. So he does make a phone call. Uh, I'll let you know it is Professor Garrison. Um, it's not Kendrick. Although we, I would like to think that Tristan would have probably called Kendrick had they not just had that falling out. So... Going on to episode six. Episode six will kind of pick up where we left off in episode five, but we also get introduced 
to Uncle Hamp. Uh, he is probably my, I don't know. Him and Ben are probably neck and neck in terms of my favorite new characters this season. And I really think you all will enjoy him. So with all that said, make sure you like, subscribe, and share the podcast. If you want an episode, excuse me, a season three, uh, make sure you donate PayPal accounts in the link. So, all right. Thanks for joining me.